Greetings, Earth children. It's time for a history lesson. About 45 miles south of Tucson sits the Tumacacori Mission, an 18th century Catholic church once manned by Spaniards in the hopes of converting the pagan Opata and Papago Indians. Turns out the missionaries were Jesuit priests. And here's a copy of the image they used as their emblem. The missionaries at the Tumacacori mission had a second goal when they discovered silver in the area in 1766. Quickly, they put the Indians to work mining the silver in several mines throughout the area. The Opata Indians preferred working in one particular mine more than the others, and the missionaries allowed this, as the mine was highly profitable. At the back of this mine was a giant room where all of the silver was stored in a pile in the center of the room. Despite their best efforts at converting the Indians, the Opata utilized the big room piled high with silver during the night to perform their old pagan religious rites. However, they must have absorbed some of the preachings because when they saw a Mayo Indian princess traveling in the desert, they were convinced that she was the next Virgin Mary. Kidnapping her, they took her to the big room and piled high with silver and told her that she would marry their chief in order to produce a child savior. The princess refused, saying that she would rather die. So, one Sunday when the Indians had the day off, they tied the princess to the mound of silver in the center of the room. The chief gave her one last chance to marry him or die, and she chose death. The chief then cut her hands, rubbing poison into her blood, and telling her when the sun touched the wounds, she would die. As a small ray of sunlight beamed through a hole in the center of the room, the Indians began to dance and sing around her. When one of the missionaries heard the commotion coming from the mine, he went to investigate and found the dead princess still tied to the silver and the Indians dancing around her. Appalled that their preachings had been so violated, the missionaries sealed the mine entrance shut, leaving the princess and all of the silver inside. According to the legend, both the silver and her skeletal remains still lie hidden somewhere near the Tumacacori mission. Old Spanish records place the Opata mine halfway between the Guadalupe mine and the Pure Concepcion mine, just waiting to be found. The Tumacacori Mission in the surrounding area is now a national park. What say we play a game of Tumacacori? What you got to do is place the game board in the center of the table and your pieces on each corner of the game board. What? You don't have game pieces? You don't have a game board? Well, let's make some. First, we start with the design. Let's use the old Jesuit emblem and make a few changes, inserting even a color wheel and some dots for navigation. Then we'll have our really nifty Tumacacori game board. Included in this package, you will find a PDF document with everything you need to print out your own game board you need six pieces of paper and a color printer. Make sure you go and put it on the settings for landscape and then go ahead and print it out. And with the magic of technology, before you know it, you're going to have six different pieces for our puzzle. Once each of the pages has been printed out, then you need to trim them so that they fit together. And as you look at each of the pages, you will see that there are some natural borders where the points of the star are still pointy. But then there are some areas where it looks like it cuts right through the middle of a bubble or something. Well, what you want to do is trim those off so that they come together. Then match them up, turn the paper over, 
and put two little cross pieces of tape at the top and the bottom of each joint and then one long piece of tape to uh, seal the seam. Next you want to cut two pieces of cardboard 10 and a half inches by 22 and a quarter inches. You will notice my cardboard is actually made out of wood. That's because I got tons of wood all around and very little cardboard. Turn the cardboard upside down and using a roll of tape, it could be duct tape, it could be masking tape, whatever you want, put three layers of tape directly over the seam where the two pieces join together. And voila! You have a hinge. Now turn the cardboard back over so it's uh, facing up right again. And then using a glue stick, go all the way around the, the perimeter on the edges of the wood. And then with circular motions, put glue in the middle of the wood. Then you take one half of your graphic and you do the same thing. Turn it upside down, go around the perimeter edges put glue in the center of it and then uh, apply it to the wood itself. Just make sure you put the piece of paper right along the center seam area. Do the same thing with the other piece of paper. Line them all up, smooth them out, and then you have a beautiful game board. You might want to trim it you can use scissors if you turn the cardboard upside down and cut it off. I decided to put a beautiful blue trim on my board and I did that with some of the painter's blue tape. So I left, oh I did maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe three-eighths of an inch showing and the rest would overlap. Then I just fold it over so that it creates a nice looking border and it makes it more durable. Then when you come to the center part where it's supposed to fold together, just slit it with a knife so that it will uh, close together really well. And you have created your game board. So let's make some pieces. You like this little lady? Cute, huh? Well, start with a quarter and some hot glue. Put a little dab on it. Put a nickel on top of the quarter, put some hot glue on it, put a penny on top of the nickel, hot glue on top of it, and a dime on top of the penny. Then a nice little glob in the center of the dime, or at the bottom of a matchstick, and then stand the matchstick straight up. Add a little bit more of your hot glue to make it stand really good and straight. Now we want to make the character. So take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and begin drawing. This happens to be a race car. Yeah, a little bit small, but hey, what the hey. Cut it all out, then in the center of it, cut a little V-notch. That's going to make it so that it will slide over the top of the match head. Once you've got that all prepared, then you will take some of your glue stick and put it all the way around on both sides of your newly made car. Slide it over the top of the match head and voila! You have a car. Then it's time to customize. I'm putting hair on this guy and I want to make the hair look like it's blowing in the wind. So I'm having it stand straight out uh, on one side. And because this is a surfer, surfer dude kind of guy, we're putting little blonde strands of hair in there as well. All this is being done with hot glue and just kind of molding it as you go. Be careful because you can end up burning your fingers. The last step is to paint your figurines. Be creative and use lots of color. Of course, what you see here may or may not appeal to you, and you certainly can make them much larger. It's up to you. Oh, and by the way, each person needs to make two figures for themselves.